All right, back for another super quick video in the GLS series. Um, so you can go get the plugin on Patreon if you want. Follow the previous videos, and you'll learn, you know, how to make basic states with it, how to set up the example project, how to get a three-part jump, how to set up the Dragon IK skeletal controls. Um, this video is going to be about the Dragon IK aim solver using the Atom component. Um, so you have your Dragon IK example project. Unzip, get that. That allows you to have your test project. When you open that up, there's a third person Anim BP that's set up for the main character. That'll have your skeletal controls in it as we go over in the previous video. And then in there, there's also an aim solver example. Now, again, I'm just gonna copy this because it's way, way quicker, um, but I'll deal with that after. Let's go over the setup quick. So this is our example project that we've been working on. Um, inside here, we have our animation blueprints. And on the side, you can see we have our child character. So the reason why the base character is this is mainly just to have components on it without loading everything into memory, like your mesh and everything, um, which you'd want to change per character anyway. So in this, we're going to add the gate anim component. Um, and this thing is going to have a bunch of features over time. Those are going to, you know, come and go and stuff like that. To be honest, I'm not even sure everything's going to stay in there because it's a bit of a yeah, there's just some parts that I would like to improve on this thing. So, um, and then one of the next things that's coming is a humanoid procedural turn in place that uses this component. So it'll stay around, but it's, it's just doing different stuff. Um, so one of the things I do want to update and, and change out here is that I want to be able to change or promote the look at socket name, um, from something like head to barrel or something like that, or, or whatever. And then also change where it's where it's originating. So right now, um, the aim solver is originating from the camera and the head. So it's basically wherever your character is looking at, and the forward vector of your camera. I believe it's the. F I think the head is actually the start, and then it's the forward vector of the camera. I might be wrong. I'd have to look. Um, there is a uh, mouse aim feature. I'm working on some top-down stuff. Uh, that's kind of still in progress. The first person thing is, is not functional right now, but it's definitely something that it's going to be worked on in the future for sure, because this works with the camera system and everything works great with it. So it's just a matter of playing around with it. Um, we're going to ignore that though, because most of it's just the transform we're getting. The rotation data, it just is, you know, rotate the velocity, uh, desired rotation, absolute rotation, uh, desired at angle. Um, this is a pretty simple function, but it's it, it, all it really does is it um, it changes things like your use control yaw rotation and, and various things like that to change your rotation type. That's about it. Um, and then your rotation speed. But primarily, you just add that thing for the solver transform so that it actually brings back a valid variable inside of the animation blueprint. Um, Inside of your child, if you choose to, you can set it from rotate to velocity to absolute rotation and whatever, and you'll see what that does. So typically, if you have rotate to velocity, you're just going to walk in any direction. Um, whereas if I change this to absolute rotation, for example, it's going to change me to strafe movement. And uh, that's kind of the, the use of this stuff is, is changing your movement rotation type. So like, for example, if you're playing Dark Souls, it's always going to be rotate to velocity until you lock on and then it's going to be uh, absolute rotation or one of the other kinds that is allows strafe movement. Um, okay, so now that's set up, we'll go to the uh, animation interface again, as always. We're going to add another layer. This layer is going to be called, or actually this Duke <laughs> aiming. Um, we're going to add another input pose here and see how it says in pose zero. The reason why it says in pose zero is because we already made in pose on our skeletal controls. So this we're going to call pre-aim this time. A little bit easier. I should change this to like pre-IK or something like that would be fine. But um, that may not always be the case because a control rig would be located before the skeletal control node, um, most likely. So we do that. And then we go to our humanoid base instance. And I just learned something a few minutes ago. You can just drag this. So then you can't get the wrong interface. It's pretty magic. Okay. So we have that in there. Compile. It's just going to look like that. Um, this doesn't have to have anything else done to it. You should do aiming before inertialization and definitely before skeletal controls. Uh, it'll just make your blends look better. And then we're going to go to our layer interface. 
And the last part of this is really easy. It's sort of similar to this. We're just going to copy and paste from the other, from Dragon IK's example project. And feel free to tweak everything you want after you do that. Um, the main thing you're going to need to do is if there is, if you're using the UE5 mannequin instead of the UE4, right off the bat, you'll notice that it's a spinal 3 as your spine chest. You want that to be spinal 5. Um, everything else should be the same. In the previous video, I also realized I had made a mistake, uh, or not really a mistake, but I couldn't figure out why my, my feet height offset wasn't right. It's because all of the nodes have this feet height offset, or at least the aim solver, the uh, foot solver, and the spine solver all have this foot, foot uh, offset. So you want to go to each one of them and change the foot height offset down to one so that they all have the same footstep data. This is kind of why I'm leaning into the data asset thing is because this kind of stuff wouldn't happen um, in theory. Uh, but yeah, so you just set up, make sure your foot height offsets whatever if you're on UE5 again because now it's going to be level with the ground. And then because of this look at location, you can get this, you know, make your own function on the character blueprint or whatever you want or make your own animation component or whatever but the the option is that this is a thread safe replicated aim solver right out of the box so you can just click that like that like i said eventually i want to promote it so that maybe you can have um an actor you can set by instance or something and then it will grab the uh, a certain socket off of that or so socket location rather off of that actor to start from or something i'm going to expand the aim solver for sure and make it a little bit more flexible. Um, it's just because of replication and stuff, it's a little little tricky. Um, but yeah, that's all you have to do to the aim solver. And then the aim solver is now going to work. You can see I can look down, I can look up. Um, because of absolute rotation, it's not gonna look like I'm really moving, but you can see that if I move a lot, it'll sway my shoulders. And easier way to see it is if I change to rotate to velocity, um, you'll get some kind of goofy bugs here, and this is where I want to expand on this series eventually too. But if I move around now, you can see that I'll lock myself at 90 degrees and I won't rotate, and that's where kind of turn in place would take take effect. Um, but the aim solver does work everywhere, and it is replicated and works out of the box, so I shouldn't have to shouldn't have to do anything. Um, hopefully, this doesn't crush my frame rate. Oops. Aye, aye, aye. And you can see that it's working on both. That's the server anyway, and then this is the client. So, yeah, I uh, hope that shows off Dragon IK's aim solver because it is a wicked, wicked tool and saves a lot from your animation budget. Um, I'm going to mention one more thing before I go here which is that if you want to go with a traditional aim offset method, uh, you just add two inputs here that would be your floats. And that can be aim yaw and uh, aim pitch. And then you can compile that. And then inside of the uh, humanoid base here, I think this should change. Oh, they're right here. So uh, you can expose these as a pin onto it and then they they exist and you can put your own variables there or you can use the thread safe ones that come with uh gate animation or gate locomotion system so there is aim yaw and aim pitch built right in um and then those will get thread safe fed into this animation graph and then inside of your layer um you now have aim pitch and aim yaw so you can use this method and use aim offsets as well it's just aim offsets add eight animations or eight poses per character like per per uh layer basically to your character so it kind of gets cumbersome in a way because let's say you have 10 different weapons that's 80 freaking poses you're adding to your animation budget for no real good reason because dragon aim solver will do it damn near just as efficiently if not better and has way more controls over things that you would like um so yeah i highly highly recommend this this is like a large portion of the reason they even made this plugin was so that this variable could exist easily for everybody because I love it. Um, so yeah, uh, like and subscribe and hopefully you grab the plugin and, and enjoy it and let me know if you have any problems.